Greetings to everyone from around the world. This is a Sunday sermon recording from Father Mike of Our Lady of the Hills Parish here in Southwest Ohio. I am your host, Ishmael Ali, and here is Father Mike's sermon. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. So good to see so many of you here today. Kim, are you doing a count? Are you going to count everybody? Yeah, we have, I stopped counting at 85. We're into the 90s. We never get that eye. I think they're here to see the Lutherans. (laughs) See what they really look like. Well, they're very handsome and beautiful. Now, I got a story here from St. Augustine. And you know, Martin Luther was an, I think he belonged to the order of St. Augustine. So we got a connection here. So let me tell you the story. The year was 415 when St. Augustine decided to take a break from writing his greatest theological work called De Trinitate, which means on the Trinity. He was exhausted. He was trying to understand how could God be three persons yet still be only one God. So August, 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 St. Augustine, St. Augustine, took a stroll along the beach to contemplate this mystery. He was not alone on the beach, though. A little boy was running back and forth between the sea and a little hole he dug in the sand. St. Augustine walked up to the boy and said, uh, Son, what are you doing there? The boy held up a little pink shell, and he replied, I'm trying to fit this great big ocean into this little hole. So the boy would take the shell, dip it into the sea, then carry it back to dump a few drops of water into the hole. St. Augustine, he laughed, and he said, Son, you could never fit this vast ocean into that little hole. And the child looked at Augustine and he laughed and said, and your little mind could never understand the vastness of the Trinity. (laughs) Whoa, it's called a snark, that was snark. But here's the thing, at that moment, the child disappeared. So Augustine wrote about this. He believed it was an angel telling him, you think you're gonna understand this, you never will. And it's interesting to note, Augustine worked on De Trinitate. Trinitate. He worked on this for 30 years. And you know what? He never finished it. He couldn't. There is no end to God. There is no full understanding of God. God will always just be. Be. God revealed to Moses, you know, his name. First time in history where God revealed his name in the burning bush. Remember the burning bush, that story? You know, where God spoke to that bush to Moses. In fact, it's uh, recorded here in Exodus 3.13. God appeared to Moses in the burning bush and he told him to go to Egypt to lead the Israelites out of slavery. In response, Moses said to God, Well, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, 
The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them, God? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am sent me to you. The very name of God reveals who he is. God is saying, I am, I be, I exist, and I've created everything. I need no one for my being. I need no one. But you see, when God revealed his name to Moses, a wonderful thing happened. And I'll explain this to you. In those days, in those days, if you knew someone's name, you had power over them. You had the power to call upon them for help in time of need. So with God revealing his name to Moses, he is saying, Moses, I do not need you, but I need you to need me. I think that's the mantra of all mothers. They want their kids to need them, you know. They'll even make you feel guilty if you don't need them. <laughs> They'll make sure you need them. But see, God, like a mother, is the same way. He, he, I don't need you, but I really want you to need me. And that's what God is saying in his name. The God who was divine sovereignty over, over you chose to give you power over him when you call upon his name for help. You know? I think we do that down here on the earth. Like I'll look at Rose. I said, Rose, I need tomato sauce. <laughs> I just gave her about 15 bottles of old tomato sauce jars. But you see, if you know someone's name, then you have an intimacy. And by knowing their name, they'll help you. When I was a chaplain at Children's Hospital, 27 years, I ministered to children in the hospital at Children's. And, and, and I, always used, I always used to say to the, to the nurses, I used to say, the CEO, the board of directors, and all the doctors do not run this hospital. It is a little baby crying in the incubator. They run the hospital because thousands of people were engaged, doctors, nurses, you know, financier, financiers, presidents. They were there for that crying baby. When that baby cried, they went into action. The crying baby had all the power. Knowing God's name gives you power over his heart, over his heart. No wonder Catholics have pictures of the Sacred Heart all over their homes. Do we have, we have some here, I guess? Uh, oh, right up there, yeah. Right up on the wall there, there's uh, the uh, St. Faustina vision right up there. And so the Sacred Heart, what that really means, God loves you so much, he gives you power to call upon him when you need his assistance, you need his help. In fact, God says, this is what God says, not me. God says, the same Lord is Lord of all. He richly blesses all those who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Can I get an amen? amen. That's true. That's from Romans 10, 12 to 13. Call on the name of the Lord. I've been calling for many years. And you know what? God does answer. He does. He doesn't always answer the way I want it, but he does hear me. And he'll always give me the best of what I need. <laughs> I, I remember this line from, uh, have you ever watch All My Children, the soap opera? For five years I watched that. I got addicted to it. But <laughs> that was years ago. But there was this line in that show where one of the people, the actresses says there, all God's 
children deserve the very best. I've always remembered that. We are the children of God. God says, you deserve the very best from me, your God. When you call on him, you get it. I find it so cool. This, this just gets to me. I find it so cool that God, who is all-powerful, you know what he wants you to call him, don't you? Daddy. Daddy. That's from the Bible. Abba. An English, the English translation is daddy. It's a very intimate term. God wants me so close to you. Call me daddy. <laughs> and Jesus said that. That's from Jesus himself. And why should we call him daddy? Because he cares for you. You know what the real mystery of the Trinity is? You're never going to understand three persons and one God. I mean, we're not in this life. But to me, the real mystery of the Trinity is this. Why does God love me so much? Why does he love me so much? I don't deserve it. Well, maybe you do, Rose, for making spaghetti sauce. But, <laughs> but really, why does God love me so much? How many times have you and I sinned? How many times have you and I, in a sense, betrayed Christ by doing something he doesn't want, us to, want you to do? But we do it because we're all fallen. But yet Jesus loves us and he raises us up and he makes us his own. The most popular story in the Bible, you know what it is? The most popular story is the prodigal son. We're all prodigal sons and daughters, you know, and God is always there like that good father looking for his son, always there on that road looking for us to come back. We have a God who loves very much. In closing, theologians have used earthly examples to explain the Trinity like an egg. An egg has a shell, a yolk, and an egg white, but it's one egg. Uh, water could be steam, ice, or liquid, yet it's one same essence. I like the example of the pretzel. And it's true, the pretzel, believe it or not, the pretzel was used as an example of the Trinity around 1500. This is the, how pretzels came to be. Around 1500, there was this Franciscan monk from Europe and he was teaching his students about the Trinity. And to help them understand, you know what he did? He took some dough and he shaped it into the three-hole pretzel loop that we know today. You know, he shaped it that way. You got three holes in one pretzel. And that's how he explained the Trinity to his students. And so he got this dough, shaped it into a pretzel, he baked it, and covered it with sugar. And then he gave them to the children so that they would remember the Trinity. Now he named them Preciolas, and that means little reward. <laughs> That's what it means. That's where we get pretzel, from the Preciolas that this Franciscan monk made for his students, the little rewards. You know what? I'll never look at a bag of rolled gold pretzels the same way again. Oh my God, there's a trinity in that bag. <laughs> God bless you all. Happy trinity. And on this day, I really like to think of families. Because, you know, you got a father and a mother, and they make a baby. That's kind of like what best explanation of the trinity I could find. The church teaches the father generates the son because when the father thinks about himself, it becomes real. So the father in thinking about himself generates a son. Now the father and the son are so one, so united in love that their love then becomes another person of the Trinity that the father's son, what's called spirate, spirates the Holy Trinity. Like I say, We'll never be able to understand it. Maybe moms and dads and kids, that's the best example I could think of. God bless you all. Peace to you. Thanks for coming today. And go out there and love your family.
Never, oh, ever take them for granted. Amen. Name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. This recording of Father Mike's sermon was produced and edited by me, Ish Ali. The intro music is Amazing Grace, sung by LaGrave Avenue CRC of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Thank you to Father Mike for a great sermon. Previous recordings of Father Mike's sermons can be found at stmaryhillsborough.org. That's S-A-I-N-T, maryhillsborough.org, and on the St. Mary Hillsborough YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this program, please donate and help sponsor future sermon recordings. You can send checks to St. Mary Catholic Church, 212 South High Street, Hillsborough, Ohio, 45133. All donations are tax deductible and greatly appreciated. Thank you for listening.